uh, direction. And um, then also, you know, move the, uh, the Y axis to the uh, Z PVC tubing so I can decrease my frame size a bit there. I should be able to make those changes. To easy yeah. Enough. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, decrease the frame size uh, definitely would help. Yep, yep. Yeah, you, always want, you want to keep that frame uh, tight. You don't want extra space in that. that that's going to cause all kinds of problems. Make that too big. Yep. You want it as big as it needs to be. Yep. And you've got the fat fat height sensor. That's good. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and if you get a chance, like try to put placeholders with. Um, for some of the wiring, how that's gonna go? Cause you, we gotta account for all of that, so it's not a mess at the end. And mounting yeah, of the yeah, cable sure chains. How to move those around in CAD? Um, seems like it'll be a little bit crazy. I think I could just use circular edge constraints and uh, bind them on rotation points. But those constraints, thinking, then just start to piece chain them together. Um, you know, I have I have some stuff over here and I have some scrap that I kind of have some rods and um, my calipers here and these parts from Stephen are really helping me visualize this stuff as I'm entering it in the CAD. Uh, these, uh, you know, yeah. these dimensions for my, because really I mean my, I need my dimensions for my rods to be perfect and spot on and I need to know where my wire management is going to go. Those are the key things here. Um, I think I'm at least there. Um, where I know my uh, rod lengths are correct. It looks like it's going to be 500 millimeters. Yep. But yeah, my calculations really want to kind of prove that too, because, um, so, I didn't really put my notes here, but some of the issues I had with my free CAD today. Uh-huh. Uh, how do I move dimensions? The text that displays the dimensions? How do you move the text? I don't know. I don't know if you can. You just de delete them and draw them again. Yeah. There's yeah, other. There's another way to do it. There's, there's annotations. Yeah. I, I haven't really worked with annotations within FreeCAD, but there's a. What? Yeah. That makes sense. I can just use annotations. I can annotate it and put some description of what I'm annotating and just because I can put that wherever I want. Just it always just puts dimensions in a really odd space. Yeah. Actually, um, on a FreeCAD 101 page, let me paste this in. A, in the notes here, annotations. There is a tutorial on annotations. Yeah. It's on the oh. FreeCAD 101 page. It's the last thing I actually ran into it the other day. But unfortunately, it's in Spanish. But it was a good one. You can you can almost like get what they're saying there. Yeah. Um, okay. So you were trying to use the dimensions tool, not the yeah. part tools that the issue. Oh, the dimensions. So the note, note how um, the 500 millimeters is like a mile high above the model. Uh, I am yeah. unable to specify where that dimension is displayed on the model. Uh, yeah. I, have, I have attempted to select uh, the dimension and use the move command and draft to move it to a different location. However, it refuses to be moved and returns the location after I enter, you know, after I move around. I guess I have not worked on I use the uh, part measurement tool a lot if you ah. want to see measurements, and plus it gives you like deltas and, and Ooh, there's a okay. bunch of buttons plug in there if you're not that familiar with it. Do workbench? Uh, it's the part workbench. Okay. And some, sometimes that's the dimensions tool is usually less accurate, or it can be, but right. you can use, use it more because sometimes it's hard to use the measurement tool in certain spots.
saw works does, like tracking off an object and moving your dimensions around, but we'll get there. Yeah. Uh, I don't see a way to edit the distance. Well, I mean, the, 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 yeah, I don't see a way to let, label the, the, the dimension tool. looks like it says point one, point two, and you can edit that, but you can't. Yeah, you can select the dimension displayed, and you can uh, execute the move command on it, and the dimension does move on the screen. Um, you know, you can just, you know, bound to X, Y, or whatnot, whatever your plane you're looking at, move it around, but upon pressing enter, it doesn't go to the new location you just specified for it for whatever reason. It might be constrained, but I'm not sure. Um, but okay, I, I'll try using another tool on the part workbench. That should help because I really want you. Know, I really want these calculations to be. I want these critical measurements to be right in front of someone when they're looking at it. You know. Yeah, but that. Yeah, but. But that's um that thing you get out of the drawing dimensioning workbench though. That's that's probably the better way to do it. Oh. The the drawing dimensioning where you just make make technical drawings with all the dimensions in there. So you probably save it for later. Okay. Yeah. That's probably true. Some of those plugins and uh, tools and for converting to like vector graphics were pretty good. Yeah. For connecting yeah. dimensions on, on larger um, components and, and objects. So yeah. 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 I mean, you can do you what. What I suggest is like the you know you you have to. It's more about, I would say, like if you move the, yeah, if you move the, the extruder head around, yeah, just doing the screen captures, you can read that stuff off the, off the drawing there, but at the end of the day, we're going to make fabrication drawings for this, so, so you don't need to put this in here, it's going to be more in the drawings for the individual parts, like, like the thing you have to do at the end is okay. What's the exact length of the tubes? What's the exact location of the the holes and stuff like that? Yeah, so, and that will be just a you know standard CAD document. Yeah. Just rolling, say, saying, hey, here's this, here's this axis of the X one, and yeah. showing a profile just to yeah. be maybe. Yeah, and for, and and for the holes on the Z Z members, we're gonna jig that. We're gonna put that put that member on a jig and and drill that. Using a jig, so. Um, yeah, I saw uh, Stephen uh, Stephen's log. Uh, yeah. What he was doing, build his thing over there. Yep. Um, right. Yep. So, uh, illustrations and drawings, uh, John, you may not have seen before, but what we did is that there, there's some plugins, and we use that to do to generate vector graphics that are just black and white. Of, of uh, objects, and we did language agnostic instructions. And I think if you search for okay. not the language not agnostic instructions page on the wiki, there's probably instructions. Uh, I think there were some instructions in some, some Google Docs too, but uh, <coughs> how to use those plugins and so on, which you may not have seen yet. Yeah, but I don't think that's your immediate goal right now, but that's how it was done before. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna, you know, my, I think my quick goal here is uh, I wanna, you know, move around that extruder to the back, uh, rebound the Y axis, and then re verify that my extruder can travel the full length of the bed. Um, is what I'm gonna do. So that's my thing for the X, the Z axis, though. Um, so the 12 inch bed is in the middle, but how does that, I'm kinda trying to look around, how does the Z axis attach to the bed? Um, it's r rods. It's long rods that. Right, long rods. Okay, you don't. Let's see. Where can you? Right. Yeah, long rods through those through the short idler pieces. You put yeah. short yeah. idler pieces on it. Mm -hmm. Long rods through the short idler. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I missed. And that. they're just okay. clamped down, and the short idler is is done through that nut catcher. Yep. Just like. The X to Y is caught with the nut catcher. X to Y with the nut catcher. Yeah, how do you connect the X axis to the Y axis? There's uh, nut catchers on the end pieces. And that's, right. yeah. So you thread, are you threading the uh, rod then at the 
No, no, no. It's just bolts. Six millimeter, your six millimeter bolts that go through the Y piece inside into the X end pieces. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I see that now. Yeah. I see that. Okay. Looking at it in front of me. <laughs> right. And, uh, yeah. Are you good to go? Let, can we move on to Abe? Yes, yes go ahead. Um, yep, got it. Okay. Abe, let's, uh, let's do it. So I see you did s some more detail on the um, hydraulic tank. Yeah, working on, let's see. How can I reduce it? I did it. I'm trying to do the inside plumbing to the tank, and I added, I added that to the wiki on the conceptual design page because I, that, about that before, so that's how mm -hmm. I put that in there. So that was good to know that that plumbing has to go in there. Um, I got the three quarter inch down, and I'm heading that now down to half inch, so I can add um, yeah more half inch pipe and, and stuff for the other half inch returns. Uh, three quarter inch one there is just on the on the return of the filter, and so I'm gonna add those shortly. I'm gonna have a, some time to work on it today, although I haven't got a lot of hours in it lately. slowly but the I guess the bonner only questions further on are, are how it's gonna hook up my tractor yeah yeah we're gonna have to put in uh, I'm thinking probably the best way would be to do the kind of like we talked about a little bit about rails like like a structure where you slide in the power cubes maybe a, yeah. fr a two by two inch angle frames connected to the main frame Yeah. Together easy. That's not that hard. I think I've got everything pretty edible. Um, I've been trying to make sure the files, everything I do is more edible, which sometimes takes a little more time, but I think I've gotten most of that better. Um, just I'm liking the wood a little better. It could be a little cleaner with the file arrangement and so on, but um, everything where it could be is fairly easy to edit now, I think. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did, oh, I did get, well, let's see. I did talk to Lex. That was, was that last week. Did I talk about that already? I got the uh, burn downs, but I'm, I'm kind of back and forth between trying to get stuff on the CAD and then trying to catch up on uh, documentation and work a lot of times. But, so I did get the burn downs started on the, uh, the spreadsheets with the, uh, for both power cubes, I think. Yeah. Does. And I guess, actually, I, I, I meant to comment, I'm going to have him. Uh, I think Lex has it set up right now where he has to, he needed to add mid log in to start that burn down. So I just give him the cell for the constructions there on the wiki. Um, I think that the spreadsheets, let's see, I've got to put some better numbers in there so that it, uh, some of these things are already done in the, in the spreadsheets uh, as far as tracking uh, the build and build materials, they're finished mostly because it's just a reference to previous file work, so I guess some of that needs to be linked. Okay, as long as it's, uh, yeah, as long as it's accurate and, and the right thing, yeah, but if it's not, then start a new one and um, make the appropriate changes, because you don't want to make little changes on an old version, because then we're mixing versions. So as long as it's yeah. identical, that's acceptable, but if it's not, you must copy it and fork it. To a new new entry, you yeah. know. I mean, let's see, spreadsheets for both versions of the power cube, like you were saying before. So I guess you mean the files 
yeah, you're talking about the Inuit fires with the bomb and all that stuff. Um, for each five. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I'm not sure what kind of changes. There, there may be some changes to those files. Um, Right. I mean, the idea is that you've got the, here's the theory, you've got the development template, you've got uh, the entry that you can click on it, and for example, like PowerCube 1711, can't have that 7 there without an entry to a link, so that's, you know, erase that 7 there. Um, yeah. But, but wherever, but wherever you have an entry, when I click on it, it leads me to somewhere but and that has to be correct for the current version now if it's pointing to an old version that's fine as long as there's absolutely no changes because as soon as there's any little change then you need to you need to start a new link because yeah, then you're correct. mixing then you'd be mixing versions so that's the part you have to be very careful about yeah. because if you say oh well I'm just gonna make this little change on the old one well then you've just messed up the the correctness of the old one if that old one is a little different you know yeah yeah the burn down yeah since i've started the burn down on these i wonder if there are any changes made to this now the burn down well i guess it depends on lex's code it can go up and down yeah it can go up and down and that's that's fine because if you find that we need to do something more that we're incorrect, yeah, that's fine. We have to correct the burn down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I was thinking of having them start burn down for the, uh, the live track too, because that that's kind of yeah, involved. yeah, definitely. If you, if you, yeah, yeah, please do. Please start that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tracking all the files and changes. That's that's a uh, complex task. Yeah, there could be minute changes, so that can be hard to figure out. Um, well, if there's a minute change, then, yeah, that just needs to be reflected. And and the notes, yeah, I mean, you can put a note saying, okay, change log right on that page, like whatever you change, change this since the last version, so something can be recorded. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I guess these, let's see, using the short... Uh, the short templates, I guess the first Yeah, called. yep. Some of those things are, well, everything in there is going to link to something that's pertinent for, for your project, but I think the short ones are sufficient. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, there might even be some extra lines there. Uh, cut list, I'm not sure. Uh, on, the, on the short templates, like for the CAD file. Yeah. I know you can just, every time you upload a file, it keeps the history of the revision history of the file. That, to me, that's what you're kind of using there. Well, yeah, yeah, the spreadsheets in the Google Docs, they do revision, but we're kind of pushing out copies of the files for each version, like version 17.11, version 17.18.01. Right. Um, yeah. On separate copies. Because, like, it's from year to year. Yeah, it's weird. We have, like, you know, for each file, we have different revisions of the file kind of on the wiki for the file page. But uh, I know Martin put together a genealogy uh, document or started to for the 3D printer. Um, maybe for the, um, you know, live track and the rest, you can kind of have a genealogy page showing how each... There is. There is. Have. There is. Right. Yeah, there is live track genealogy already. Um, but the main thing to keep in mind simply is that every single entry in a genealogy needs to have its development spreadsheet for it to be fully documented. Right, right. So, oh, I see it. Okay. yeah. So there's a lot of, I mean, like, you know, Lifetrack genealogy with like those nine different versions already. There's a lot of work there. It's all over the wiki, but you can, uh, from the genealogy, that's the best place to track everything. Yeah. And going forward, making sure that whenever we have a new version, we document everything under that as opposed to trying to, you know, change it. Yeah, never ever change an old version documentation when you're working on a newer version because that makes the former documentation incorrect. Because people think it applies to the old version and it's actually for the new version. Yeah.
So that's just the, the only thing to keep in mind. Yeah. Um, and that's why, you know, as time goes on, we'll probably get get this refined more, like get better systems as, as, we, as we go along, just create better systems. But right now, I mean, that's, that's the best we can do right now. Yeah, in some ways, it's easier to have a old document sometimes if they're not changed, but in some ways it would be nice to have a complete package that we just copied over and then... Yeah. Things ...sometimes, but that's... Uh, that's a large, complex um, package of files or something. Yeah, like but the thing is, after, like, so say we we do the uh, the micro track, the next version or whatever, I mean, the problem is that we have not gotten to a, a product release, like a real, okay, we, we, we say this is a feature freeze, this is our official version. I mean, we got to sit down and say, okay, we do it here. We have actually not done that at all for the the tractor uh, so for every project we have to say okay this is our official version right now there might be versions that are going into the future but this is our stable release so we have to declare something okay this is the stable release and it should get as much documentation as possible um, with every every everything that's needed for that to be complete I mean you can actually say that uh, I, I might even take that back and I, I can say we do have a stable version in the Civilization Starter Kit version 0.01. .01. Those four machines are fully documented for what they were in like 2012. So we do have that. We, we just never had another um, release like fully published because we were just doing too many things. And there's too many things that are being developed. So, yeah. But that, that needs to happen eventually. Mm-hmm. And that's why we need a team for every every project, like a full full time team for every project. Hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the files do have to be a little bit different when we start talking about the different machines and different stuff. The short tap one won't work for everything. Uh, it's got different things that aren't pertinent to every project. So. Right. Right. And it's yeah, and actually, uh, in a template the way to do it without messing up the template because basically the the burn down parses a certain I'm actually not sure I think it just reads uh, reads the total done column but if we make a more advanced version of the reader like if you even change the number of co of uh, if you change the number of rows in principle the the burn down algorithm should say, oh, okay, we've you now you erased one because it wasn't relevant. Well, your percentage total done went up because the number of items was became smaller. Or if you add some, you know, you have to. That's another thing to do, and then uh, the burn down would change automatically. But right now, as long as you don't delete any lines, you can you can still like erase some things. Or just cross yeah. them out and put a 10 by them or something. Yeah, probably the... Lex's code for that, for the burn down, it reads whatever cell you tell it to be currently. Right. Um, I'm putting the sum, sum cell. I guess technically you could do burn downs for all the, the totals of each part of the, you know, every section, but um, the bomb or, or any of those that have numbers there, that can burned out charts, but that's probably overkill, so um, it, I haven't actually, actually, I haven't even done and looked the generated burned out chart, I, I need to find if that's working, actually, I'm going to look at those. Yeah, but, um, but, but in a 20, in a 20-step burn down, I mean, it definitely should have every single one filled out, like, you know requirements we probably talked about them but we may never have written them down industry standards like all of them are are important like um and probably for a lot of them yeah. like say industry standards we can refer to older work because we probably have done that before and stuff like that so um yeah that uh, from the previous idea. let's see do we have um a webinar on a development template 
I don't think we really have one. That's that's something definitely to do, and that's some of the things that I really need to do for the immersion training, just to have people at least give them a decent reference on what we're doing with each thing. Right. So, yeah, that I don't see any videos on a development template. Yeah, we need to yeah, do that. Information about that might be helpful. I don't even know. Uh, I think you mentioned the math. Well, it works out. Let's see. It's just one to ten. That's what it says at the top. It, right. It sums and divides by. Oh well, I see it divided by three thirty. Yeah, because there was thirty-three lines, and if it's not thirty-three lines, then yeah. that needs to be changed. Oh, that yeah, that's wrong. Then. 33? If it's by 33, no, you need to change it divided by 20, by 200. Yeah, so, that's so okay, there might be an error there, so yeah, we got to fix that. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me take a look at that. Uh, make sure. Development template. Let me look in there what, whether the template itself has, has got the correct... Yeah, it looks like there's only 20 lines to be added. So I guess the, that must have been for the long template, template because there's 26 rows, but there's only 20 lines to be summed up. Yeah, no, that, that's wrong. The, the long one is wrong that should be four five that should be four four hundred thirty not three hundred thirty because there's forty three in a long one uh, so I just fix that and for the short one I, I fixed it in them yeah no that's wrong that should be divided by two hundred right so yeah so you just burn down quite a bit right just by doing that yeah, yeah, and I, I fixed the original templates on that. Yeah, it's divide by two hundred and four, four hundred thirty by the for the other one. Yeah, okay. Sorry about that. It was my bad on that. Um, to keep the source template accurate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've got to go edit and the other templates too. So. Yeah. Um. Okay, um, let's see, Abe. What are your next things on uh, on your plate then? Uh, let's see. I've got to finish plumbing. There's a lot of plumbing related stuff, and I think I'm, I'm close on this. But I expect some adjustment in relation to getting all the fit on the tractor. Yeah. So as soon as I get the basic plumbing in the tank done, and I get some of the plumbing. Um, yeah, with the pump and, and some of that, I'll, I'll start trying to figure out how it goes together um, with the multiple cubes. Uh, so, uh, and I, I may draw, I'll try to draw in some of the plumbing, um, just to give more detail, but uh, I've got some sweeps in there just as representations, but I might try to draw a little bit more detail on the actual some degree that that's just gonna make it a big file and make extra work so we'll see how much representation it can do, uh, out of hand. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um open source photogrammetry. Uh I was gonna ask you, do you um have you ever played with photogrammetry? Take a look I at I yeah. think it's, you've got to have, I mean, obviously there's got to be some pretty good software out there for analyzing. There is. Uh, take photos. a look at. Not, not even using a laser scanner, right? No, it's no. Some, and, Pictures. And from the photos, it can figure out uh, depth, I guess, and so on. There's some. Uh, yeah, here, here you go. Open source photogrammetry. Yeah. Have the connect. You have all these things uh, that use point cloud to connect. And then you also have just webcams. The dif differentiation between two images. Um, even with a webcam, I know I have a buddy that built a webcam and a stepper motor. Uh, is able.
able to 3D model something, you know, like a white room and a stepper, white box and a stepper motor. So it makes sense that someone's extended it to a cell phone app. Uh, there's a, uh, there might be some, there might be some, but uh, take a look at open source photogrammetry, uh, the recent video by Joseph Prusa. I think we should try that and see if that works. Uh, because, uh, so if you ever get a chance to look into that, do, because that may be a way to do it. You just take pictures and then use these uh, couple of pieces of software he uses. It's called um, Colmap, C-O-L-M-A-P, and then he uses MeshLab to clean it up. So, uh, if you look at the op open source photogrammetry, I was thinking, I keep thinking about the, the engine, things like the engine, hydraulic pumps, we should, do, we should uh, scan them. And, but we probably have to spray paint them with, as I mentioned, with, with some black paint so it's not not shiny oh i, I guess i i'll have to look at the videos that there on yeah the take a look at the first video um but it yeah sounds like it, i mean technically you should be able to do it with the video but you kind of positional well i mean you, no you don't it, that's where no. the software comes in the software does the calculations so no, no stepper motor. So no, 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 no. Just take a bunch of pictures, and that's it. And you just process the images. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that works. It's interesting because if we could do useful 3D scans without really anything, I, I know that there's going to be a little bit of effort in, in post-processing because you got to clean up the images a little bit, but yeah. we should definitely well, figure out a workflow for that get the right soft lighting on it yeah you might be able to eliminate a lot of the glare and those kinds of issues too right that's part of it lighting with the photography initially but that's correct but whatever you do it even if it's diffused light and you have a shiny surface you st you you still won't do well it yeah, just doesn't get... work well with it so but definitely, definitely would be useful. So, for example, we could, we could have that be part of the, the documentation, like our jams, our development jams. Let's call it OSE jams, like a development jams. Um, part of it, like for example, we could do photogrammetry during those too. So, say you know, I bring the hydraulic pump, and someone d works on that as one of the many tasks in a jam. You know, that would be cool. So we can, for example, put in a a more more accurate version of the pump for the power cube you know so things like that could be could be done also within the framework of a of a development jam so that that's why that's why I like it because it doesn't require any any equipment just your camera probably a lot of it, room for improvement on that software too if somebody could apply some AI or neural nets to the image processing yeah. you would yeah. May, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I guess I, I guess that's probably uh, possible. Uh, but I know that it could probably, like, if you apply AI, it might fill in like gaps by understanding that this is some kind of object, which is already trained to trained to recognize. Yeah. yeah. Right. When you know, if a person does perspective, like they just are generally taking a picture in the front, the back, and both sides, they able to use those old features if they're unique enough to be able to re reconstruct the rest. So you don't have to have a stepper motor and all that. That's pretty cool stuff. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, and then the other issue, I guess, with, with converting to CAD is how much detail. Um, it depends on, I guess, the type of file, too, file size, and whether you have more detail than you want, but detail is good as long as the file size. Yeah, well, the current problem is that when you generate these these 3D scans, you you start with a point cloud, you have to convert it into mesh, and then that's with MeshLab, and then after that, if you import it into FreeCAD, FreeCAD can't work with meshes. Well, so probably our last po processing step is someone actually takes that and redraws it within FreeCAD, but at least they have a 
an accurate template that's been 3D scanned. So they might have to redo it to reduce the file size or just eliminate unneeded detail. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. The, the workflow is not easy, but now hopefully one day we automate that completely where we go from a bunch of pictures to a free CAD file format. And that's why we need a team to do this kind of stuff. Uh, build our team so we can actually get some programmer to, you know, say, you know, one person could probably spend six months working out that whole tool chain, you know, to do it properly yeah. and efficiently. Yeah, there's probably plugins and things that could be written too to automate that a bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. From mesh, uh, estimating detail level or something, but it's probably a lot of work to do that too, so. Um, so far, I've had good luck just tracing things. I do a lot of stuff. I'll look up um, uh, other CAD sources on things, but instead of just like importing a lot of the stuff, I um, trace it or just reference it because I figure it's better if it's done in FreeCAD and more editable uh, for future use. So yeah, yep. Stuff from the master car, like these elbows I've been working on, I, I just redrew in FreeCAD. Uh, I just used data references for the pulse sizes because yeah. that'll be a lot easier to edit the part to any size that I want later. No, that's right. You know, that's right. So that's uh, been a lot more helpful just drawing everything in free cat. Yep. Okay. Yeah, let's let's wrap up here then. So yeah, yeah, good stuff. We'll continue doing it. And by the end of the year we're gonna have uh, four to twelve full time people. This is gonna be good. Some comments about uh, yep. plastic. Uh -huh. Is it okay? Yep. I just recently had a slide. Um, okay. 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 <laughs> My current sta state is I do some uh, flamingo integration. It's almost finished. Okay. And okay. The, the development of flamingo helped me. There is an entry on the FreeCAD form. Oh. Um, now, uh, what, you, what you can do, for example, if you, um, it, it is highly experimental, uh, I need to warn everyone who uses it, um, but uh, the huge advantage is, for example, if you will add um, a fitting or a pipe, <coughs> um, wait, uh, how can I... the screen if it's possible. Yeah, share the screen. Um. Hmm, Yorick saying, wow, every day a new baffling workbench being developed. All right, Yorick is one of the starters of FreeCAD, so... That's good. Yes, and he, he, he made some very nice architecture. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He's a... I, I like his work. He's a professional architect using FreeCAD. Uh, I was uh, really surprised to see him on the phone. But uh, I like his architecture a lot. Yep. Okay. Uh, can, can you see my screen? Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. For example, I will take. No, I, I don't see your screen, but okay, it might be. Let's see, because. Uh, no. uh, yeah, there it is. There it is. Go ahead. Uh, okay. I will make a bottle. Okay, because you were struggling of how to do that before. Yes. And what's what was uh, your discovery? How do you do it? Uh, you, you need to, to learn about uh, a lot about 
free cap. Okay. And also I look uh, at the code of um, developer developer of Flamingo. He has a uh, uh, nickname Octopus. Yes. I don't know the pronunciation, but so uh, he supports developer. So tell me, tell me what. So OSC piping workbench. How is it integrated into into Flamingo now? Uh, Flamingo is integrated in uh, our workbench. Oh, into our workbench. Okay. So what? Uh, for example, when I create uh, some fitting. Uh huh. Uh, for example, let's let's take a bushing uh, Then uh, you see now there are three options: solid, but like it was before now there is a flamingo aha uh -huh. and if you will uh, take flamingo yep then you will not uh, then you will uh, create a part using a um, library from flamingo then you can change um, change your properties change dimensions okay of it. and uh, this ah. is very convenient and uh, what also should work how do you change those dimensions? You do it through, you can do a, how do you do it? Here, do, do you see a list uh, and property in this part? For example, Okay, property under property. properties, okay. Okay. Like, uh, like height and the, the same for the pipe. Okay, excellent, I excellent. I create a pipe. I just create a pipe. And I can make it... Uh, You see? Or I can change the Yes height. I see. This is great. Alright. So uh huh. So are you claiming that so is this uh, the definition of done for what you need to do with the piping workbench at this point or uh, no there is uh, there are something to do. I need uh, the only missing fit, uh, fitting is uh, across. Okay. Uh, all the other already done. Then uh, for elbow, I, I want to um, to have some uh, common standards with Flamingo. For example, my elbows uh, are created in uh, X Z plane, plane, but uh, elbows in Flamingo are created in X Y plane. Okay. And I want to have a um, similar interface. Uh, and um, then I w want to uh, to test. Uh, the rotation and translation uh, commands from Flamingo. It should be later possible to uh, adjust the parts on easier way, maybe by selecting two ends of uh, uh, of a pipe and the fitting, and then uh, they will adjust it automatically. Okay. Uh, I I hope it will work, and also rotations. I believe that uh, uh, FreeCAD is a pretty good program that it, it uh, offers a possibility to to create uh, good uh, user interface. Uh, but I need uh, to do a lot of work, and sometimes it's, uh, yeah, I had also some kind of existential crisis after I realized how much time I spent oh. uh, uh, for for this kind of work. <laughs> Okay. Uh, and then, I, then I just uh, extrapolate uh, how much time I will need to do all the other things. Mm. And um, I, I, no more words. <laughs> I see. But then you might resolve your existential crisis by saying how many hours total you will save people in the future. Yeah. Uh, nevertheless, uh, I underestimate uh, the the time I needed to create this kind of things. Um, but as I, I wanted to ask John, John, you you in the very beginning you mentioned that you had some uh, some troubles. Oh yeah, sure. Um, uh, you you sent me something. I, I didn't uh, receive. Not, not yet. I have not sent you an email yet. Ah, okay, okay, I'm waiting for, 
for the people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll send you an email about, you know, just the bug. Um, you know, so I, I rendered an object at, like, um, you know, some uh, millimeters long uh, for an axis and uh, for the uh, one inch uh, schedule 40 uh, pipe. And, um, you know, the dimension appeared to be the, uh, well, the actual, so for each, for when you render the PVC pipe, whatever the dimension for the axis was, so say I had specified dimension for the Y axis, so say I said I wanted uh, 485 millimeters, it would actually um, make the full dimension of the thing uh, 485 millimeters uh, plus, um, so what is it here? Okay. Oh, 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 five millimeters, which is you know the dimension of the uh, pipe end unit. Uh, so yeah, I'll send an email. Oh, okay. I will try to, to find it out and, and, and to fix it as soon as possible. Thank you, thank you for your yeah. feedback. Um, I keep uh, keep on finding the bugs in my workbench. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't want to frustrate people. No. Uh, what? Yeah. Um, it's easily worked around. Um, you know, just by accounting for. No, no, it, it should not be. It should not be. It should. Uh, you, oh, at least you. Bugs. You don't. You never want people just working around your stuff and not reporting bugs. It's never. It's never good. But uh, being a software developer, I'll, I'll always report bugs. <laughs> one of our. Yes. One of our no, that's good. Report bugs. Don't just work around stuff. I, I don't want people to hate me. Oh no, <laughs> that never will happen. You won't no. be that guy. Built this thing to begin with. Yeah. Okay. Also, question to uh, I think also question to Abe. Uh, Abe, uh, are you here? Yes. Uh, you, uh, I look at your work um, work log and you uh, create some ill walls. Uh, maybe I also can create ill walls uh, which you can later use. The elbows you made, they are similar to, uh, I think they, they are called the uh, long elbow. Do you, do you need them? Yeah, actually I probably could have, maybe I should have looked at the workbench and see if I could generate something close to, uh, I'm trying to generate the specs for NPT, the national pipe thread uh, standard. So that might be a difference, because these are the PVC, you've been basing everything up the PVC sizes, right? Uh, you don't uh, need to, um, to create PVCs, uh, you only need uh, dimensions, and dimensions are for, for fittings and for pipes, not strictly for uh, pipes and fittings of particular material. And you you can adjust them. You can add some entry, entries in the CSV files, and then they are not not normal PVC, but um, for example, metal pipes or PP or PE, mm -hmm. polyethylene, polypropylene. Um, so you have a that's generating the parts that I can kind of just put in uh, other dimensions and it will generate an elbow. Like this is what you're saying, which I, I saw your workbench before uh, testing some stuff in that slide. Uh, yes, but, but I also agree I didn't make, uh, make the documentation how you should uh, or how you can uh, edit uh, files because I spent so much time to <laughs> try to. Uh, Finished uh, flamingo, uh, flamingo integration, no other stuff. Um, but it's my fault. Um, the, the, the recommendation is not ready. Sorry, everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I will try to improve. And uh, then I will try to add the long ill balls. The long ill balls are n not yet implemented. They will, the ill ball, 90 degree ill balls, which are in my. Um, my working page, they look not not as a arc, but rather as an um, corner. If it's 
important for um, for you at uh, drawing. Yeah. So you're saying that uh, one of your learnings is that when you have scheduled, say, 40 pipes, I mean, the, the same dimensions apply for PVC as, for example, metal? Uh, no, this is not true. Uh, not the same one of weight, the same dimensions. The dimensions' uh, names are the same. It's uh, outer uh, di diameter and thickness of the pipe. Mm -hmm. But uh, the values uh, of these dimensions uh, are, of course, different because uh, metal can um, keep m more pressure with thinner uh, walls. Right, but the dimensions are... So you're saying the dimensions are the same? Uh, I think, yes, you have only three dimensions to describe a pipe. Uh, this is out uh, outer diameter, thickness of the walls, and the length of the pipe. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So we can use this for other things. But the geometry, like for example, for a fitting, like that, they'll be somewhat different, right? Like for example, I a T. Think so. it, I think it depends on how detailed you want the pipe fitting to be. Like there's protrusions on the end of these metal um, yeah, yeah. pipes, the PT. Uh, so there's like two, you know tenths of an inch difference for the half inch or the three quarter for you know the yep. protrusion on it's not really that important right so some of those other dimensions or shapes aren't as critical for just the pipe size so maybe threads uh, are important but they are not uh, supported for now yeah threads are too complex I mean we've been avoiding those I guess the dimensions that I've been going with are to just go to the inside of the thread, which I think, you know, if you look at them like MPT size charts or pipe size charts, you get you get the dimensions uh, relative, I think, to the, the inside of the threads. Inner thread depth. I think there should not be problems with uh, fitting from other materials uh, than uh, PVC. Yep. Okay, no, good job. And then looking at your contribution in the top 20 leaderboard right now, you're at 233 hours, almost 240, almost almost two-star developer, Ruslan. You're getting really good. <laughs> All right. This, this is what I get uh, in, uh, as a reward, a, a star. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you will get also some, some kind of rainbow or unicorn. Uh huh. It makes this a uniform badge for definitely run. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I have a, uh, another comment and question. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I try to improve my documentation of Workbench and now I will probably remove uh, all documentation because uh, I, for, for me it's. Uh, yes, I. Uh, it's some kind of uh, log, uh, log book of my work, but uh, I need. I, I will try to keep the documentation short, uh, similar to uh, Martin, your YouTube videos, to keep us as uh, as small as possible. Yeah. But uh, uh, but also very, very dense. Not not uh, not to remove important uh, details. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um. So you mean you'll you'll edit it down just to refactor the wiki? Uh, yes. Yeah. I, I will do it, and also to think uh, at it from a didactical point of view. Definitely. Just to create a, a efficient documentation. That's good. That's good. And of course, the old stuff will remain in a history too for anyone who wants to see it, if they do. Yeah. And uh, I also tried to uh, add um, some discussion with discuss. Uh -huh. and it was just horrible. It, it, uh, it, it, wait, I, I just don't have a, some kind of nice euphemism, euphemism uh, word to describe my experience with this, with this tool. Uh -huh. uh, 
I, I was not able to to add uh, discuss entry, and the uh, documentation is horrible. And I don't know how to find out uh, to look for channels. There, for some reason, I need channels, but uh, there are there are not there is no search fu function there. Uh, Were you trying to embed a log? A, a discuss, or were you trying to just use it? I tried to to, uh, to uh, create some kind of uh, discussion at my yeah uh, for my workbench. I was not able to do it. I d don't know how to do it. And uh, my, I thought maybe I need to uh, create a, a discussion in, or, on OS, OS E channel. Uh, but uh, there is uh, there is no search function there. Mm -hmm. You cannot look for, think for things uh, based on text search. You need to to click on. Uh, it's just just horrible. Mm. From my uh, from my subjective point of view, maybe it's very nice, but I was not able. Okay. Uh, Yeah, unless we um, use it, uh, we wouldn't know. I mean, I don't know. Like, okay, okay. Yeah. This, uh, yeah, this also a possibility. Mm -hmm. uh, that sounds like yes. Kind of maybe you just have to apply some sense. I can't think of a way I would standardize the dimension of an elbow, other than that. Uh, you know, I try to orient more complex objects in. Um, so that the, the vertical direction is the z-axis just because that's the standard in physics and, and engineering, I think, generally, right? I, I think yes. I mean, um, that's true, it's just the z is typically... Oh, no, no. It's true in three-dimensional yeah. drawing. But if you look at the drawing of uh, fittings, they're two-dimensional. Oh, yeah. Then it's not clear what we're looking at. Uh, the oh. X, Y. Yeah, there's some rules to uh, X, Y, and Z as a uh, third angle projection on a CAD diagram. If you have a CAD diagram, you're going to have the uh, central. So you're going to have three renderings. Let me see if I can if I could share my screen. Okay. There is a standard for that. CAD and school and such here. You know, is, I, is my screen displaying? Uh, I, I can see. We can look at a, a topic called third angle projection. And just what it ends up being is you have. Um, So drawing one in this, so you have a, a drawing, a, a 2D CAD drawing of something. So drawing one right there, for instance, that might be the uh, X, uh, Z here. And then you're going to have another drawing up here. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot I really like doing the right action. What, what, uh, what are you showing? Uh, I, I, this is the standard. 
standard on uh, 2D drawing, how you translate a 2D drawing to three dimensions. Okay. Uh, the international standard. Um, it's called, in, the, in the international standard, it's called uh, third angle projection. So let's go here. Might be a better. We can't see your screen, I think is what you meant. Oh, you can't see the screen. Um, oh, sure. Yeah, there we go.
All right, good job. So I think that's about it for now then. Uh, is that uh, any other issues or questions? Let's keep going. Excited to, you know, get these measurements done and build this thing here. Yep, and um, build the team. Okay. Yeah, build, build the team. Yeah, we need that. I think we just need that core, you know, group of people that's either paid or just there that can, you know, hash out the main standards, be the main core company. And we're, we're getting, we'll be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, that. yeah, so. we've got to make that a priority. Okay, well, thanks a lot, guys, and... Um, yeah, I mean, and as far as all you guys, I keep inviting different people to the team. But yeah, if you see people uh, that can join our team, bring them in. Yep. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, everybody. So we'll talk again next Tuesday, and we'll we'll talk then. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. You're out. Thank you. Yep. Bye bye. Bye.